Hi everyone, it's Moa aka Swedish Whiskey Girl and today we're having a little look at Wolf Burn. So we're going to have a look at the Northland and the Moravin. So, Wolf Burn is a distillery that reopened in 2011 after being closed for approximately 150 years. I've had a little look at their timeline and it looks like it could have been in production. Uh, the old distillery could have been in production until about the 1860s, but they're not really sure. But this is the new distillery that is up and running since May 2011, I believe. And I think they started their production again on Burns Night, so the 25th of January in 2013. Their first release was the Northland, which is the first one we're going to have a look at today. This sits at 46% ABV. They're both natural colour and unchill filtered, and the Northland's unpeated and the Morven is peated. And I believe the Northland has been matured on American Oak Octave Cask, was the first release from the distillery. And it's of course quite an interesting distillery, so it's the most northerly on the mainland here in Scotland, or in Britain as well. And one of the things I read up on when I was doing my research is that the wolf that's on the bottle actually was taken from a, an old linguist and zoologist from the 16th century called Conrad Gessner. And the logo was taken from a drawing from his work, The Four-Footed Beasts and Serpents, I think it was called. And I mean, being a vintage enthusiast, I just love these kind of little quirky facts from distilleries. And I absolutely love the fact that they've taken this from such an old work. It's also quite fun because in Gessner's days, so in the 16th century, the wolf wasn't that uncommon to come across in the north of Scotland. And on the coast of Scotland, you could also see its uh, relative, the sea wolf. And it was said that it would bring you luck if you actually got to see it. So that's, of course, another little fun thing about them. And of course, the main wolf burn comes from the water source. So the, the burn, uh, I'm not really sure what the... English word for it would be, but it's like a little stream or a, a little movement of water where you can take water from. Uh, of course, burn is a quite a common word in Scotland and when I moved here I had no idea what it meant, but that's where the name comes from. But let's try some whiskey. And we are going to start with the Northland, the unpeated one, and let's have a look on the nose. Immediately makes me think of a little bit of kind of that maritime-esque feeling because it has this, it's quite dense and it's also it reminds me of if you're walking on a beach, maybe in autumn when it's quite cold, it's definitely not like bathing weather, even though I am a big fan of going for a really cold dip, uh, especially if you have a sauna to run into as well, but it's this kind of cold when you're on a beach but you don't want to go swimming and it's just quite rugged and maybe a little bit rainy and you get this scent of wet sand. That's kind of what it reminds me of initially. It quite that maritime denseness. There's also sweetness there. Hmm. Some vanilla and some oakiness. But I see the sweetness along with the dense maritime wet sand note is the, the thing I'm getting the most. And the sweetness quite a fruity sweetness. So maybe like a green apple pear sweetness. Quite earthy, a little bit kind of musty as well. Interesting. Well, let's have a little taste. Slunge of that. Yeah, it's quite maritime. The mouth feels quite oily. A little bit of that metallic note. But the metallic note goes a little bit towards like a saltiness like a sea breeze-esque. It's that same kind of feeling of the wet sand that you get on the nose. Like it's it's quite coastal in a way. It reminds me a little bit of um, like a mixture between maybe 
like a talisker without the smoke and Old Pulteney. That kind of coastal, maritime-esque feeling. It's quite earthy on the palette as well and it has this, this soft influence of old tannins. And there's definitely a fruitiness and a sweetness there. But I think the, the maritime influence and the oakiness and the oiliness and that slight metallic note are the ones that kind of go on top of the fruits in this case. So itchy. And it makes for a really nice maritime whiskey. I wouldn't say it tastes that young. Of course, it's a non age statement, these both are, so I'm not sure entirely how old they are, but yeah, quite pleasant. The oiliness of the whiskey also makes it feel quite smooth. It has like a slight cinnamon spice that just like leaves it a little bit dry, but it is still very a very juicy whiskey. It's that kind of tannin, cinnamon vibe that just makes the tip of my tongue feel dry. But I also, at the same time, salivate a lot, so it gives me both, in a way. But the dryness feels less, so it's maybe like 20% dryness and then 8% of that juiciness. But let's try the other one and see how it compares. So we're moving on to the Morven, which has a, it's a lightly peated whiskey. And the reason they're using smoke, I believe, for this one is that in the old days, in their 19th century distillery, the one that was before the one there is, the, basically the old one <laughs> that was there 150 years ago-ish. And that distillery was, of course, fired by peat. So they used a lot of peat to keep everything going. And that is the case that if you try a lot of old whiskies from ages ago, from 100 years ago or further back, a lot of them have a lightly peated influence because at the time you used peat as a heat source. So you used it to fire up your houses and of course your distilleries. So peat is an interesting thing. So it's a young version of coal, making a lot of compressed vegetation. And it's when you set fire to it, you release phenols. And if the barley is at the right moisture, I think it's between like 15 and 20% moisture level, the phenols attach to the barley and leaves it with this smoky flavor. So that's, the phenols are the flavor compound that you get in your smoky whiskey. And of course, if you're making heavily peated whiskey, you can use a lot of that peated malt. Um, but back in the day, you basically only had peated malt. So that's why a lot of the whiskies were peated because that's how you would dry the barley, which is of course quite an essential step in making whiskey that you have to stop the germination and dry your barley before you can mill it down. And of course, I'll do another video on whiskey production to explain that further. But it's lovely to have this historic meaning behind peat that everyone kind of used it. And nowadays, when people are using, for example, air drying their malt, you have another alternative. And of course, a lot of people think that unpeated malts might be a little bit easier to approach than a heavily peated one. But of course, it just comes to whatever you like. So interesting to have a look at this one. Let's start on the nose. Mm. There's definitely a smoke there. It's soft and gentle and it's yeah, very nice. It's like a sweet citrus smoke, I would say. And it's almost just like a breeze. And also, I might still have the photo of that kind of coastline or the beach in my head. But if you're in autumn and you're standing on a beach and this breeze comes in and that carries with it a little bit of sweetness and citrus, but it's very elegant and gentle. That's what the smoke on the nose feels like to me on this one. So definitely that kind of lemon and lemon zest in S. It was like a dremen, dremen, dremen sizzle, a lemon drizzle cake with peat. <laughs> Let's have a little comparison.
Yeah, so the pita tone to me feels more like a patisserie, a smoked patisserie, and the unpeated one is more maritime, but I think now I also get a lot more fruitiness on the Northland. But let's have a little taste on the Morven Slender. It feels initially quite earthy and vegetal. And quite musty, that earthiness, a little bit like leather. This one feels, I mean it has a hint of that maritime feeling, but it's more if you try a Highland peated whiskey than maybe perhaps an Isla. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more floral, a little bit more dry, I would say. And it's, yeah, dry, but more that kind of leather, robust, earthy, musty note. Oh, those oak tannins are there. I think the oak tannins are there slightly more on this one. They haven't specified on their website exactly what cast types are used for this, but I'm guessing it's um, American oak as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's... I don't think... The interesting thing, I'm just trying to make up my mind, but it's... Because it has a drying sensation, but I think when the drying sensation goes alongside like a leather note, and it does feel like leathery and earthy and musty in that way, but it's not that robust. It does have all those kind of flavours, but it still feels quite easy going and smooth. And the smoke is there, but it's definitely a lightly peated whiskey. But I think if you're new to peated whiskies, I think you might experience the smoke as amplified because of the leather and earthiness that goes alongside it. Because it's easy for them to kind of entwine and become this bigger flavour altogether. But if you can pick them out separately, you'll notice that the earthiness and the leathery note are there almost more. There's like 60% of that and then 40% smoke. So it's it, that feels a little bit toned down, but all together they kind of come together and make this bigger flavour, if that makes sense. And of course the name Morven, I believe, is a feminine name that is the name of a Scottish place that basically means Big Gap. And it was the name of Fingal's Kingdom in James Macpherson's poems, so I think that's where the name comes from. But let's have another look on the unpeated Northland and just compare. This feels sweeter now, but it still has that kind of maritime-esque wet sand notes. Almost a little bit more tropical, like pineapple. And oilier. This feels so much oilier now. But oilier in its flavours. Like oily fruit. Even though it's still has a little bit of that oak tannins and the earthiness underlying. And then a last sip on the Morven. Yes, soft earth and that kind of citrus, citrus sweet smoke. This also feels a little bit more waxy now. It's a lightly drying bonfire smoke that mixes with the earthiness and the leather notes that come together and then now a little bit of a waxiness to it as well. Interesting. Hmm, I'm not sure if I prefer one over the others. It's, yeah, they're, they're quite different. But they both have this kind of oily character to them and slight maritime influence. 
But I would of course love to hear what you think. Have you tried either the Northland or Morven from Wolfburn or have you tried perhaps another of their whiskies? I'd love to hear what your thoughts were. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links for the Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All that information is of course in the description below as well as links to my website, my Instagram, my Patreon and my Teespring shop. And speaking of, a massive thank you of course to my wonderful supporters on Patreon and thank you for wanting to continue to support me on this whiskey journey. But I hope you all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slangera. Scope.